Hey guys, welcome. In this video, we are going to do a practical deep dive into two of my favorite Unity assets, Feel and Text Animator for Unity. They are both phenomenal tools that have tons of five-star reviews and both have earned various awards. And right now, both are 50% off for the summer sale. And we're gonna start with Feel. Ready? Let's go. So here's our starting scene. We have a player with a Gatling gun and a dummy object, which is technically taking damage, but we're going to use feel to juice this up and make it really obvious. So first things first, we need to install it from the package manager. I'm using Unity 6.1, which means that it'll be in window, package management, package manager, and we'll just search for it and import it. And just a quick FYI, they have a huge variety of samples that you can check out. But if you're in a URP project, make sure that you import the URP assets here, which will override all the built-in materials with the proper URP versions, and now we can actually view them properly. Now to get started, it's super easy. I'm gonna go to my dummy and add an MMF player component to him. Right now, this is just a blank canvas that can hold as many feedback effects as we want. So first, let's get him flashing red whenever he takes damage. And to do that, we're going to add a material set property feedback. Every feedback we add is gonna come with a few standard sections like settings and randomness. In settings, you can change a bunch of things. You can change the chance of this firing. You can change the time scale. You can add delays, repeats, add it to a sequence. You get it, there's a lot of options that you can play around with. But for me, all the defaults here are totally fine. What I want is this material section here and we'll assign a renderer, and now it wants a property name. Now I do already have a custom shader graph shader set up on this sprite. I can just drag the emission amount up and down here to make him flash. And if you're curious what the shader looks like, this is it here, it's pretty straightforward. We're just blending our sampled texture by a color and controlling the overwrite amount with this float here. So we wanna grab the reference of our emission amount right here since that controls the flash amount and we'll plug that in right here. So this is gonna be really quick. It's only going to last 0.11 seconds. And I'm gonna change this curve so that we go full red first and then down to zero over time. Now to actually play this feedback, back in our dummy script, we need to add the moremountains.feedbacks namespace and get a reference to our MMF player. And right here, we're just gonna say feedback.playfeedbacks. And there we go, that's working nicely. All right, step two, particles. So I already created a little particle prefab here. Just note that by default it's shooting to the right, that will be important to remember in just a minute. So let's add a particles instantiation feedback. And I love this because it handles pooling them automatically for you. Just make sure that pool is selected and plug in the parent transform and our particle prefab here. All we have to do to make sure this prefab works with the built-in pool is to make sure that our stop action on our particle is set to disable. Now, what's bugging me about this right now is it shoots to the right every time, no matter what angle I hit the dummy from. So to fix that, we need a reference to that particular feedback. This is an MMF particles instantiation, so let's add that to our dummy script. And to get a reference to it, we'll use feedback.getFeedbackOfType and pass in the type here, just like getComponent. Now that we have that, we can get a reference to the particle system that we just spawned in, and we can set its transform.rotation. But we do need to set up a quaternion for that. So we'll create a particle rotation, and we'll use from to rotation. We're doing from vector2.right because the prefab particle is always shot to the right, and then our shoot direction. And now that is working much better. All right, next, this one is very easy and it's really subtle, but I do find that it adds a nice touch and it adds to the anticipation of the hit. We're gonna add a freeze frame and you can see it wants us to add their time manager. So I'm gonna go ahead and add one up here. And our feedback is automatically gonna find that. So we just plug in a short duration. And the thing that's gonna make this slightly more noticeable is if I also add a pause in here. What pause is gonna do is everything above it is gonna play normally, but everything below the pause is not gonna run until the pause is finished. Okay, next we'll add a hit animation. So I've already rigged up the dummy with some simple bones, and I gave him this one single animation, which gets triggered with the property name hit. So we'll add an animation parameter feedback. We'll plug in his animator, 
And since we're wanting to set a trigger, we'll say yes, update trigger, make sure we're setting it, and then add in our property name. And I think this is already starting to look pretty good, but what we're gonna add next is a spring float, which looks really good. This is going to require us to plug in a spring component. So on the dummy's body, I'm going to add an MM spring squash and stretch, targeting the body, and we're gonna set the axis Z to Y. And if you're in play mode, you can open up this test section here just to play around with some of the values. So I'm gonna do a bump at 200. Next, I want to play a sound, very basic, but also very important. Now, if you want just one, you can plug it in here, but I actually have five sound effects that I would like it to pick from randomly, so I'm gonna plug those in here. And I'm also gonna set a slight variation to the volume and to the pitch to make sure that we get a nice variety of sounds and it's not always sounding the same. Now, if you're using a gamepad, you can add haptics as well. So for example, if you choose high impact, now when I shoot, my gamepad rumbles. And finally, we're gonna add some floating text. So I have a transform that I'll plug in here, but it also requires a text spawner. So I'm gonna add one up here. And I am good with all of these default values, but we do need to plug in a prefab. And I'm actually just gonna go ahead and hijack one from their demo scene. But one little thing I wanna to add to this is to add a feedback to this prefab as well. So we're gonna make sure that it plays automatically whenever the game object is enabled. And now we're gonna add a scale feedback to it, which is gonna scale it way up and then back down right when the text spawns in. And now we can plug in our prefab. So let's go ahead and force a lifetime. And sure, we'll animate the color a little bit too. We'll change the position mode to target transform. And I've got this text spawn transform already set up just so that it spawns the text over the dummy's head. And last little detail, we don't want 100 every time to show up. I want it to show our damage number. So in our dummy script, we get a reference to the floating text. And here I'm rounding the damage amount down, then passing that in as a string to our value. And also we're going to set the direction of the floating text as well, based on the direction of our shot. And there we go. Now, just for fun, I decided to also add some additional feedbacks to my player as well, just whenever he shoots. I added a Cinemachine Impulse feedback, and we're using Bump. And in my player shoot script, I added an MMF Cinemachine Impulse, and I got that here. And then I set its velocity based on the transform.right of my gun with a force multiplier. I also added a position shake to my gun, which did require me to add an MM position shaker to my gun object. And then just for fun, we're also doing a chromatic aberration URP. That requires that we have a global volume in the scene with chromatic aberration enabled, as well as an MM chromatic aberration shaker URP on that object as well. Now, obviously the screen shake and the chromatic aberration is cranked up way too high, but hopefully this gives you a solid idea of how to use feel to add some serious juice to your projects. Now let's move on to text animator for Unity. So if it wasn't obvious from the name, text animator for Unity animates and types your text for you. So just in case you didn't know, if you want to make specific characters in your text bold or a different color, for example, you can do that using what's called rich text tags. And Unity has quite a few of them built in. Text Animator for Unity expands those rich text tags with its own, which is how you handle animating your text. So this gives you a lot of control for very little effort on your part. So we're gonna cover everything, the basics, as well as the advanced stuff like events, actions, multiple parameters, and creating your own custom animations as well. So to get started, we'll import Text Animator for Unity in our package manager. And right out of the gate here, I'm gonna go ahead and actually steal a script from the example two events scene. The scene actually has a really solid dialogue system right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this entire script into my own in my scene called Dialog Manager. So I'm just gonna move a few things around. I like my parameters at the top as well as my awake and update functions. I'm gonna delete a few things in here that I don't need. 
I'm going to keep the bones of this on message method here, but not the actual implementation logic. And I don't need this. And finally, I just want to point out that we are subscribing to the typewriters on message event, which is how this method runs. And finally, I'm going to change this to be our continue icon instead. Okay, so right now, all the script is really doing is it's searching for input. And if we get some, we're going to call this method, which increments our dialog index. If there's more dialogue, then we show the next line of dialogue. Otherwise, we start fading out the current lines. So I've already got a little canvas here set up with my dialogue manager script on there. I've got my continue icon here, which our script is automatically going to handle enabling and disabling when it's done displaying the dialogue. And then on our actual text object, we need to add two things, the text animator, and I'm going to select a yes, start the typewriter automatically. And then we also want to add typewriter by character. So we're going to cover some of these in just a minute, but first let's go down to the typewriter. So you can see we have loads of Unity events that we can subscribe to. And here's how you can control your typewriter speed. Now I do recommend selecting this option here. The typewriter automatically does a little pause after every punctuation and selecting this option is going to prevent it from waiting exponentially when you use multiple punctuation, like a whole bunch of dots or something like that. Okay. And with that, our setup is done. Let's go ahead and add our first dialogue behavior. I'm going to pick one at random. So I'm going to use the bounce behavior and we can call it just like this. And we end the behavior with the forward slash bounce. Obviously rich text tags are when you only want to apply an effect to certain words, because otherwise we could just come back to the text animator and just add one in here for everything. Now, obviously we probably don't want that with behaviors, but you'll notice there is one for appearances as well as disappearances, which is when text appears and disappears using the typewriter, which is what makes the typewriter look so nice. So all we did was type in that one line and we press play and there you go. We get a little bounce and I'm just adding this text down here for reference, but just like that, it's working. This is just one of many effects. You can see a list of all of the behaviors on the documentation, or you can just open this drop down on the behaviors on the text animator. And here's all the built in effects. Now, this is probably a little too much bounce. So to fix that, we can also change what are called attributes or modifiers. They're all listed in the documentation as well. But here I want to decrease the amplitude to make it weaker. So we're going to make it something much less like 0.15. And now you can see it's much more reasonable. Now, the really cool thing about these animations is that you can stack these effects. So in this one, I'm going to use bounce and swing. And you can see they stack really nicely. And just a little tip, you don't need to close every individual behavior. You can just do forward slash like this and it'll stop everything. Okay. Now, if you want to make your own custom animation behavior, we're going to right click and go to create text animator animations, special uniform curve. The tag ID is what you need to enter as a rich text tag. And I'm just going to move this up and down on the Y and I'm going to give it a color curve, something really simple. Now, if we go back to our text animator class and open behaviors, we need to add our new effect to the database. And now we can just add it to our text, just like any other behavior. And I never promised my effect would look good, but there it is. We just built a custom effect. And by the way, you can also stack your custom effect with any other effect as well. Now, again, you'll notice that when your text is typed in, the letters go from big to small. That's because we're using the size appearance for all of our text. But maybe just for one line, I would like it to appear differently. For that, we use curly brackets, but it works just the same as behaviors. So I will do random direction. And now you can see the letters are coming in from random directions. And similarly, if we want to disappear text differently, we do the same thing, but with a pound sign at the front. Okay, now I want to show you events and those come from this on message method that gets called when the on message event is fired. So we simply pass in a string. That's where the ID comes from. So I'm just going to make this cam shake. I went ahead and added a Cinemachine impulse source to my game object. I made a variable for it here and got it in awake. 
Now in here, I'm gonna say generate impulse with velocity, and I'll just toss in some random amounts in there. Now to call that event, we do it just like a behavior, except we put a question mark at the beginning like this. And there you go. But we can also add parameters to our event as well. So I left this try get int method in here from the example script we copied from. I'm gonna be using this method to pass in a camera shake force. So I'm gonna change it to a float instead of an int. Now we can say try get float, and it's going to be our first parameter that we type in, and we'll create a float called force amount from that. And then I can plug in that float for my force here. And you can basically do whatever you want here. So I'd like to give us the ability to control the direction of the camera shake as well. So we're gonna add in a blank direction vector. Then we'll return a string from our event data's second parameter. Then we're gonna do a simple switch statement and I'll do a U for up, D for down, L for left, and R for right. Then we're just gonna pass in the direction as well. Now when we actually call this event, we need to pass in two parameters. So I'll say 10 and to the right. And the last thing I wanna show you is we have actions. Actions are very similar to events in that you can do just about anything with them, but they're different because they pause the typewriter until the action is completed. That's the big difference. Now we do have some built-in ones like waiting or accepting input, but we're gonna make a custom one that makes us wait for a sound to finish playing before the text continues. So we can create a new script, and here's the namespace we need to add, and we need to inherit from action scriptable base. Now this is a scriptable object, so I'll add a create asset menu attribute in there. And now it's giving us an error because it wants us to override the do action method. So first we'll keep this really simple. I will give it an audio clip. We'll play the clip. And then we'll wait for the clip's length. So let's create a new asset for that. And set it up with a sound and a tag and we need to add it to our database again. And once we do, we can call it like this, exactly the same as a behavior, except we don't need to tell it when to end. And I do apologize for the joke, by the way. Now we can also add parameters to our actions as well. It's very easy because our action marker gives us access to the parameters. So this time I'm gonna turn our clip into an array of clips. I'm gonna nab that try get int method from the example script from before and call that here. And we'll say if we enter a zero, play the first clip. And if we enter a one, play the second clip. Now you can just enter the parameters after an equals sign when we call it. And that is text animator for Unity. I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, both Feel and Text Animator for Unity are 50% off right now. I would highly recommend picking up both of these assets. They are fantastic. And that's all I got. See you next week, guys.